Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Tramel from Progressive Action. And yesterday, I received some very, very, very troubling news regarding a an assault. And we're going to say our word, assault, just for social media purposes. Um, and this alleged our word assault happened at Rector Street in Lower Manhattan, where a female employee was our word assaulted, stripped of her clothing, and had to allegedly run back to a station booth without her clothing. The story has yet to been confirmed or denied yet. Um, it's still being looked into, and I was looking into it as well. Now, while I was looking into it, I found um, something very troubling, very troubling, and there were at least two other R-word assaults in that same general area within the past month, right? So the first R-word assault happened on February 5th in Chelsea on 14th Street and 7th Avenue on the 123 line. Now, I want to read to you guys what it say. Police are searching for a man who attempted to R-word assault a woman on a subway platform. The suspect approached the 45-year-old woman late at night, January 14th, inside the 123 subway station on 14th Street and 7th Avenue, according to the police. Now, there was another one where this one doesn't say an exact date, and it's on the screen right now, along with, with his pitch at the platform. A man tried to R-word assault a woman inside a train as it approached a lower Manhattan subway station on Wednesday morning, police said. The man approached a 21-year-old victim inside of a northbound E-train, then pushed her to the corner of the train and tried to R-word assault her, officials said. He fled the train at Canal Street subway station around 10.20 a.m. Now, 10.20 a.m., let's think about that. It's a busy time of day for the subways, right? For someone to try this, it shows the level of security we really have um, in the subways. But we're going to save that story for another day. The issue I have is that there were at least two all-word assaults and not one word from the MTA warning the men and women who work in that general area um, to remain vigilant, to show us pictures, mugshots, sketches, no matter what it is, so we could be vigilant, right? Um, there's no care in the world that we have female employees who work in that area and it can easily be them and the MTA just don't care. Now, this is no surprise. I've been saying this for years. The MTA do not care about employee safety. They do not care about employee safety. When things, when horrible crimes happen in the subway, especially all word assaults where we have women um, working in the system, they should be the first to, to, to know of what is going on at their workplace. They should be shown mugshots. They should be shown sketches. Uh, they should be shown pictures, video, no matter what the situation is. Um, they should know where these things are happening at so they could remain on point. This company does not care. This company does not care, right? Now, let's just say that the, uh, the incident at Rector Street is not true, and I really hope that it's not true, right? There were at least two true ones that went down in the subway, and the MTA did not say nothing. They did not say anything. If this was too Broadway, every woman in that building would have been made known what happened in that building and to be safe, right? But this is why I say that this company, they don't care about the workforce. And we can have our speculations as to why they don't care, right? But the fact and the basis of it is that they do not care. They do not care. How can such a horrible crime happen on our property and the, the workers are not made aware of what's going on? But if it had anything to do with discipline, if it had anything to do with a customer complaint, if it had anything to do with a write-up, a manager or supervisor would have been there to facilitate to make sure that goes through. But what about safety? What about safety, MTA? Y'all do not care. Why wasn't the employees made aware of the 
the two situations that happened within the past month in that same general area, why wasn't they made aware? I mean, I'm only a conductor. You got people up there that get paid to uh, allegedly or supposedly have, have our best interest in mind, right? But I keep telling you guys, the only thing the MTA do is virtue signal. If you look at any quote by any one of their PR people, Tim Minton, Aaron Donovan, or anyone else, the first thing they say is that, oh, the, the safety of our passengers and our employees is priority. Well, when are y'all going to start putting that in action? Right? When are y'all going to start putting that in action? Because y'all play the, the NYPD game. Y'all, y'all pass the buck. Oh, police this, police that. All right. These crimes happen. Why? It, it is the MTA responsibility. Right? The MTA responsibility to make sure that we are aware of the crimes that's happening on our workplace. It's not the M NYPD job. The same way how y'all could come give us a Dan, y'all should be able to show us and give us mug shots, sketches, videos, no matter what it is, still photos, no matter what it is of situations, especially all word assaults that happen on the property here. But then y'all want to say, oh, you know, Tramel, only thing he want to do is be negative and, and only thing he want to do is bash man. Do y'all know why I bash? This is why I bash management. I don't want to spend my time bashing management all day, but you guys are incompetent with everything outside of discipline. When it comes to discipline, you guys are geniuses. Y'all top of the line. But anything outside of discipline, y'all lost. When it comes to safety, y'all lost. Y'all wait for something to happen to one of us, reactive, instead of being proactive to stop it from happening. Could you imagine if you put the same energy that you put into discipline inside employee safety, inside employee morale, what kind of workplace you would have? Do you know what kind of worker you would have if you put that same energy inside of safety and morale? You guys do not care about our safety. And like I said, I don't know if this situation is true or not, but what is true are these two situations, the 14th Street situation and the Canal Street situation. And y'all didn't say not a word about it. And it's, it's the same thing. And I get it. And I, and I talked about this on my last video. Jan Oliba have a job to do. His job is to get people back to the subways. I get it. I get it. But this is not the time to be playing politics with workers' lives, right? There's nothing wrong with you saying, once again, the subways are not as safe as we want it to be. But we're working with NYPD to make it safe for all New Yorkers. Let's be real. The subways is not safe for all New Yorkers. The buses are not safe for all New Yorkers. Now, you go out there and you say, oh, you know, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe, when it's really not. But that's your job. You're supposed to do that. But it's not safe, Mr. Lieber. And you know it. There, there's absolutely, like, just, Jano, listen to me closely. The same energy that you guys put into discipline, put into employee safety, put into employee morale, put it into dignity, respect. It's very, and you guys have no shame. Y'all have no shame. Y'all actually do this stuff with your head high as if you're doing something right, as if you're doing the work as a favor. absolutely out of control inside New York City transit absolutely out of control and you know I'm, I'm I'm tired of making these these videos saying the same thing but no I'm, I'm lying I'm not tired I'm not tired uh I'm actually having fun doing it right I'm actually having fun letting the people of New York City know what type of people we work for how they don't care about the workers 
or the riders. And I'm going to leave y'all with this quote once again. If the MTA cannot protect its workers, they cannot protect you. Make sure to like and subscribe this video and share it out. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.